Welcome to the Prayer of Consecration with Pastor Natalie. Before we get to our message, we are going to give you an opportunity to tithe. There are three ways that you can give while you watch us online. There's the website, BibleFaith.com, where you can choose the campus that you'd like to give to. We have three campuses, one in Toronto, one in Niagara, and one in Durham. There's e-transfer, which you can email um, using the email you see on screen, or there's the Tithely app. We thank you for giving to this ministry, and we call you blessed for doing all that you've done to continue spreading the gospel. And now for Pastor Natalie. Welcome back to service. I am so happy that you took time aside from your busy schedules, because I know we're very busy people, to come and partake of the Word of God. You know, the Word of God is food to our spirit, and it is essential that we on a daily basis take from the Word of God and feed our spirit man. In the past we've, uh, few sessions, we have been talking about prayer, and I'm going to continue along that line because there's a lot to be said about prayer, and we're going to be going through all the six types of prayer that I have talked about in our previous services. So I want to uh, you know, say something that I've just recently learned about prayer. I heard a minister say this. He said that prayer is an invitation to a connection with God. I love the way that this minister said, talked about prayer. I love the way that it sounds, a connection with God. It isn't boring or dull or tedious or monotonous. It, it is not a waste of time. You know, sometimes when we're praying, we feel that our words are falling to the ground or maybe we're disappointed or we're not feeling it or we're not on fire while we're doing it. But let me tell you, God's ear is open to our prayer. Wherever we come to him, he is listening to us and your words are not falling to the ground. So let's continue to press into God because prayer as this minister said, is an invitation from our glorious Heavenly Father to connect with Him in a deep and personal way. Ephesians 6.18, and as you recall, uh, we have been talking about prayer from the context of that particular scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18, which says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Now, there is so much in that, in that particular verse that we are going to look at, but look at how rich that is, that we what pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. It's just not about me and my, my three and us four and no more. No, it's about all of the saints that are in the kingdom of God. Amen. Those who God has in store for them to come into the kingdom of God, those who have not cried out yet to God, we can pray and supplicate for them. Amen. Now, if you have, uh, want to learn more about that particular verse, you can go back into our previous sessions and listen to those recordings and learn more about that because I want to move on tonight to uh, the first prayer kind that we've talked about, and that is the prayer of consecration. The prayer of consecration is a very intimate prayer, and it, it, the word consecration is defined as giving entirely of yourself to a specific person, activity, or cause. The synonyms for this word are to commit, to dedicate, to devote oneself, or to give oneself. Now, we all understand that. When we take it outside of the kingdom of God, you know, like you commit yourself to, to somebody or something. You commit yourself to your children. You commit yourself to your spouse. You commit yourself to your job. It's easy to understand it when we put it in those natural contexts. But when we talk about God, for some reason, people have a very religious idea of what consecration is. But consecration in the spirit realm 
towards God is simply that. You are committing, you are dedicating, you are devoting, and you're giving of yourself to God. The act of consecration is found in both the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And I want to look at a couple of scriptures. Joshua chapter 3 verse 5 says this. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourself. For tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Now in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 17, it says, Therefore come out from among unbelievers and separate yourself from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. Romans chapter 12 verses 1 and 2. So, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all that he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The prayer of consecration is us coming to God face to face, surrendering all that we are and have for all that he has and all that he wants to give to us. Thanking him in advance for what he will do in our lives. Notice the scriptures that we read. There are two parts to all, those, all three of those scriptures. You do this and God will do that. You come to God, he will come to you. The prayer of consecration is not a one-time prayer. It is offered to God at different times and for various reasons throughout our lives. You know, some people think that when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, that that is the time that we've consecrated ourselves to him. And that is one of the times that we've consecrated ourselves to God. That's actually the time that we make the decision to say, God, up to now, I have not known you. I have not lived for you. My life has followed the way of the world, but now I am giving myself to you. I am committing myself to you. So it's consecration. We call it the new birth. We call it the prayer uh, of, for, of repentance. We can call it various things, but it is a time when we commit ourselves to God, all he has, and we give him all that we are. Amen? However... Unlike some people think, it doesn't stop there. Consecration is a daily event in the life of a believer, or it should be. The moment that you wake up, you should say, Lord, I give myself to you today, and I give this day to you. Do what you want in it. Use me as you will. Use me to further your kingdom. That is the prayer of consecration. It could be as simple as that. One example from the Word of God is found in 1 Samuel chapter 1. In verse 11, Hannah, a, lay, a woman of God, was barren and she wanted to have a child. It was a desire of her heart and she asked God for a child. And then she says, I'm going to give him to you for your service. Let's read it. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou will indeed look upon the affliction of thy handmaid, that is her barrenness, that's what the affliction was, and remember me and not forget thine handmaiden, but will give unto thine handmaiden a man child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. Man, we could spend a whole service just talking about that prayer that Hannah prayed to the Lord and the results of that prayer because that child that she ended up getting was Samuel and he was a mighty man of God. The Bible says that not one word fell to the ground that came out of Samuel. Another scripture verse that talks about consecration is Luke chapter 22 verses 39 to 46 and this pertains to Jesus and it says, 
when he goes into Gethsemane to pray to the Father, he wants to do the will of the Father and not his own will. Now, Jesus, we know, was consecrated to the Lord on the eighth day when Joseph and Mary took him to the temple to dedicate it to the Lord. But here we see another time where Jesus consecrates himself to the will of the Father. And he says, Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. There are times in our lives where we're asked to do things or we need or we go through things and we just cry out to God and we say, Lord, you know, can this just be over? Can this just end or do I have to do this? Is this really what you're asking me to do? And we have a decision to make. And the moment we accept that commitment to do what God wants us to do and we acknowledge it and go before the Lord and tell him that we're going to do it, that's called consecrating yourself. That's called committing yourself to the will of God, to the work of the Lord, and to his purposes and his plans. Now, this was not the first time that Jesus consecrated himself to the Father. He had made a practice of it throughout his life. At 12 years old, in Luke chapter 2, verse 49... We know he was there speaking about the word. At the baptism in Matthew 3.15, in the desert temptation in Matthew 4, verses 1 to 11, every day of his earthly walk, you could see in John 5.19 to 20, Jesus doing the will of the Father. Uh, before Gethsemane, in Matthew 26, 42, you could see it there as well. And then the ultimate consecration that Jesus made to the Father was on the cross where he took our sins and our failures and our pains and he bore them on the cross because it was the will of the Father. And you could see that in John 19, verses 20 to 30. Like I said, consecration is a lifestyle. It is not a one-time event. It's not a historical event. We do it as a lifestyle unto the Lord. And it begins with prayer. Now, how do we consecrate to the Lord? Well, number one, you give your heart to God. Now, as I said, you give your heart to the Lord at the time that you make the Lord Jesus, the Lord of your life at the new birth where you repent from your old ways and you turn to God. You should know that you've done that. If you've not done that, then I hope that you do it tonight. According to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, it says that if you believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus died for you and you confess it with your mouth, you say, Jesus, I accept what you did. Come, take a hold of my life. Be the Lord of my life. I give it all to you and you receive it. The Bible says that you are born again. That is a moment, the most important consecration that you will make in your life. So you make a conscious, willing decision to dedicate your soul, your mind, your heart, and your body to God. Now you could do that every day in different situations. It begins with accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, as I said, but then it continues in your everyday relationship with the Father. Amen? The second thing you do is you self-assess. What does that mean? Well, you ask yourself if you are really giving yourself to Him. Are you really committed to the Father God, to His will and His purpose for your life? And if the answer is no, then you need to fix that. You need to go to the Father and say, where have I missed it? You probably know if the answer is no. So what do you do? You repent. The Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, it says, repent, ask God to forgive you, and he will turn it around. Amen? So self-assess. Don't wait for somebody to point out the things in your life you need to change. You go before the Father. Go with the Holy Spirit. He's our advocate, our standby. He is the one that will help us to conform our lives to the will and purpose of God. Amen? The third thing you need to do is ask for forgiveness when you miss it. You know, when you do something wrong, and let me tell you, you're going to do something wrong in your Christian walk. I've done, I think I've lived in 1 John 1, 9 
for the majority of my babyhood in the spirit world. You know, when we get saved, we are not automatically renewed. Our spirit man is born again. It is a new creation, the Bible says. We have been metamorphosized just like a cocoon into a butterfly. But you know what? It, in the spirit realm, that's true. But in your mind, you're probably going to still try to think the same way. For the very beginning, few years even maybe, you're going to continue to think the same way. But it is by the washing of the word that you change. Amen. And so in those times of missing it, you ask God to forgive you. Acknowledge your sins and the need of restoration. Go before the Father, according to 1 John 1, 9, and ask him for forgiveness. Amen. And that's part of the consecration process. Number four, separate yourself from worldly things and people. Now, this is going to be very difficult because if you were like me, I was 21 when I accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I remember I had a lot of people in my life that weren't necessarily the godly people. They were not the people that God wanted me to socialize and fellowship with. And I had to make a decision once I gave my life to God as to whether or not I was going to walk away from some of those relationships. Now, I'm not saying you hate people. I'm not saying that you badmouth people. What I'm saying is that you have to acknowledge who is going to help you in developing your spiritual walk and who's going to hinder you. And if people are going to hinder you from walking with God, then you need to separate yourself from them. And so separating yourself from people or worldly activity you know, if you did things before you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior that were not godly. And, you know, people say, well, Pastor Nolly, can you give me a list of what to do and what not to do? Listen, nobody made me a judge like that. God did not call me to be a judge. God called me to be what? He called me to be a teacher of the word, to preach the gospel. It's you that has to judge yourself. You judge yourself. Allow the Holy Spirit again to come into your heart and in your mind and speak to you and tell you things that you need to separate from. Habits, behaviors, ways of speaking. And as you do that, when you separate from those things, what you're actually doing is you're consecrating yourself. You're committing yourself. Remember what we said about the definition for consecration. It means to give entirely to a specific person, activity, or cause. Well, who are you giving yourself entirely to? God. The Word of God. The plan of God. The will of God. And then you're saying, I am going to commit myself to the plan and purpose of God. I'm going to dedicate myself to the things that God wants me to do. And I'm going to devote my time, my talents, my gift, and my body to the Lord God, my Father in heaven. Amen. Number five, the fifth step to separating or consecrating yourself unto God is to come close to God. What does that mean? It means spending time with the Father God and in His Word. You know, when I say that, spending time with God, some people might think, like, what are you talking about? I, I, like, what do I do? Hum, hum, cross my legs, take a posture. What do I do? No, you, you would do the same thing that you would do in building a relationship with another individual, another human individual. What do you do? You talk to them. You spend time with them. You listen to them. You communicate. Amen? Well, that's what you do with the Father. But the way we do that with the Father God, with the Lord Jesus, with the Holy Spirit, is through prayer and through spending time in His Word. Well, what is His Word? It's the Bible. It's the written will of God. Spend time in it. Now, if you don't know how to start all that, you can get in touch with us at Bible Faith Church, and we will help you on that journey. We have different things that we offer for people to become more acquainted and get closer to God. It is crucial in maintaining a consecrated life that you spend time with God. The next thing you want to do is to pursue 
and persevere. Pursue and persevere. What does that mean? It means that you consecration is not one single act, one time in your life. No, you pursue it. You go after it. Just like, you know, if, uh, if you, uh, like I, I, we love to eat. In my family, we love to eat. We love to try new, new uh, restaurants and new types of food. And we pursue after it. We ask people, hey, how's that restaurant? Really? Okay, so we get in our car. We drive all that way. We stand in line if we have to. That's called pursuing. And that's just for a natural thing. How much more should you be pursuing God, his will, his purpose. One of the ways that you can pursue God is to ask him, Lord, what did you plan for me? Why am I here on this earth? You know, uh, many of us have gone to university and if you've taken philosophy, that's really what it's all about is finding out what's the purpose of life. Well, you know, that's not a stupid question. That is a good question. But see, the problem with the world is that they can't answer that for you, but God can but the Bible says that before you were in your mother's womb, he had a plan for you. He made you with giftings and callings and anointings. And he can show you. He can develop those gifts and those talents in you. And then he can show you where he wants you to use them. Amen? And how to use them. I mean, if you know how to sing, that's a gift from God. If you know how to play an instrument, man, I wish I knew how to play an instrument. If you know how to play an instrument, that's a gift from God. Pursue it. And then ask God, how do you want me to use this gift for your kingdom's cause? Amen? So consecration is not a single, one-time only decision. It is a way of living. When you make the decision to consecrate yourself, you must be prepared to continue to pursue it and to pursue God for the rest of your life. When you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are saying, God, I want to get to know you. I want to know your will, your purpose, the way that you think, the way that you act, the way that you treat others. I want to be a reflection of who you are. And you, you might say, well, is that at all possible? Absolutely. The Bible says that that is our number one task. That is to be transformed into the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do that through prayer, studying the word, meditating on the word, and doing his will, and his purposes for us. The prayer of consecration is a daily connection with God. It is an intimate, heartfelt, and honest commitment to walk in his ways and remain in him. I hope that you have decided to consecrate your life to God. As I said before, if you haven't, then the starting point is accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior, according to Romans 10, 9, and 10. Confess with your mouth, believing your heart that he died for you and you are saved. The next thing you want to do is to study the word, to show yourself approved unto God so that you know how to speak, you know how to act, you know how to live on a daily basis. And every morning when you wake up, say to the Lord, I give myself to you, I am committed to you, to your plans and purposes for my life, and I am devoted to fulfilling all that you said I can do in the name of Jesus. I hope that this message has helped you. And I want to tell you that God loves you. We love you. And this is our church.
for watching the program. I hope that you received a lot that you could put into practicing your life on a daily basis. Remember to like what you heard, to subscribe, and to share with your friends these encouraging words that have built your life. Thank you, and we hope to hear from you again.